Uh, today marks Poetry Day Ireland 2017, celebrating all that is good about Ireland's very vibrant spoken word scene. Now, this morning we're joined by poet and playwright Stephen James Smith, whose work has amassed over a million views on social media, and Lewis Kenny, a poet who writes poems on demand. And uh, that will get him to explain <laughs> what the, the typewriter is about. But before we chat to them, here's a clip of Stephen James' My Ireland poem, which was commissioned for the St. Patrick's uh, Festival and went viral as a result. My Ireland is terrified of leaving the immersion on and lamenting not having won the Eurovision. And God only knows how long my Ireland loves laughing at O'Brien and Norton. My Ireland is sending gifts and emojis while waiting for absolution. My Ireland needs a vision, an Ashling, to move on from bacon and cabbage, potatoes, leprechauns, and Jesus, Mrs. Brown's boys. My Ireland is checking itself after a Queen's noble call. And in Dublin Castle heard, Ooh, the Ron, I was a cordial from El Lizzie. My Ireland is dizzy from misinformation and celebrations arising from the proclamation. Good morning to you both. You're, very, you're, you're both very welcome. Uh, can I say congratulations, uh, Stephen? Um, for a poet, and I would imagine it's kind of a hard gig to make a living out of in <laughs> Ireland, um, despite our, our, you know, the fact that we love them and we honour them and all the rest of it, was getting the commission to do that, was that the equivalent of being, say, if you were a sculptor, being asked to commission uh, to, to do something for a national monument? Or is it, was that, is it that big a deal? Well, the St. Patrick's Festival is the, is the national festival um, and the, the poem team, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So, But it's it, a centenary year as well too, so that's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, it was daunting, yeah, it was. Uh, and, and I felt a certain amount of pressure with that. But uh, you got you got to embrace these opportunities. So was it well. a case of great? Oh dear God! Are we <laughs> going to do this? A bit of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I and, and, and the poem isn't perfect either. But uh, I, I, did, I did as best as I could with it. Well, um, it's a work of art, and there's no such thing as a perfect work of art, is there? <laughs> there, there are people who get close to the idea. Yeah. Is it ever tried, ever failed? No matter. Fair point. Yeah. You know. So yeah. well, um, I'm just thinking. Well, given, I'd love to know what the brief was. Uh, well, I can email it to you if you want. Um, was, it, was it voluminous? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they just wanted me to try and be uh, reflective of, of Ireland and all aspects of Ireland. Um, and I was kind of working on a, a monologue for theatre, and which which was longer. Uh, and then, as a result of this, I was like, oh, I'm kind of touching upon some of these things. So I reworked it uh, into this poem, and uh, then got to bring together the team of uh, Miles O'Reilly, the filmmaker, and mm -hmm. then all the different musicians that came on board. So it was nice to kind of be able to get an A-team to work with. But yeah, I felt a huge amount of pressure. Was that Colin McInomerous uh, fiddle in the Yes, yeah, so it was Colin and then there's like Conor O'Brien from the Villagers oh, right, okay. and, and, and a host of other people, yeah. That's a pretty talented artistic bunch to be working yeah, with, isn't it? It's a nice yeah. company to be keeping. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I ask you, uh, as, a, as a professional poet, uh, writer <laughs> of... <laughs> I, I, I mean, you, we have this great romantic notion of poetry and we love it and it's, a, it, you know, it's an, an essential part of, of language and communication. But we, we think they're all going to die in garrets and, you know, never make a bob and oh, m maybe, you know, when they die, they'll be recognised. I mean... Well, I didn't get into it for the money. No, I, obviously, uh, I know that, but I mean... You, you kind of, I just, I mean, sure, uh, my mum lives just around the corner up in Tala and I would have been writing poems in, in the bedroom back there many years ago and you kind of do it for your own self-discovery and then it just so happens that it's taking me on this journey and part of the journey is getting to meet Lewis and sure he was out there the other day doing the typewriter mm. poems in the street and that's, you know, there, there's, there's an emerging generation of poets coming, well, coming look, through. Actually, like, I I'm only a whippersnapper. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Theo earlier on. Yeah. Well, Theo Dorgan, of course. Yeah, I mean, like, he'd be a silverback and then like, <laughs> he, he would consider me to be like a whippersnapper and then Lewis is probably a whippersnapper to me, certainly, yeah. but he's you've got... You know, that's a lovely P.O. Dorgan, the silverback <laughs> of Irish poetry. <laughs> and, and then look at his partner, Paula Mayne, who's yeah. incredible. Like, I was at a gig there in the Olympia on Sunday for Appeal, and she read her poem, uh, the, the, the Statue of the Virgin at Granard, and it was just absolutely incredible, mm. spine tingling moment. I, I, actually, there was want to talk about, uh, you know, we think of poetry, and a lot of us who did it in school, uh, you know, for some of us it's a cultural blind spot, for others it's, you know, it's the, the words and the language, and they love it. But we don't get much use for it later on in life. But if you actually look at street culture, urban culture now, rap, mm. hip hop, that's poetry, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's the most popular form of music in the world. So therefore, is poetry alive and thriving? We just don't call it poetry anymore. Uh, yeah, well, like, I mean, there's a really huge surge in the popularity in poetry in Ireland, um, especially I've noticed in the, last, in the last five years. I mean, when I came on the scene, I was probably one of the youngest on it. And um, 
it was only within a matter of two years, you know, you had even people as young as 13 coming through and doing incredible things. So I think the interest is there, the popularity is there. I would say though in terms of um, maybe the poetry you learn in school and stuff, it, it wasn't my cup of tea initially, but I think it was only because I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it, you know? And I thought, when I started writing, um, that it was the introduction I needed and it was the introduction I needed to see the poets who are writing today who may have been more relevant to me. And then from that then, when I actually started getting a, a pure interest in it, I can go back and I can look at all the things and have a newfound appreciation for it. Did Heaney change the game for everybody? Did he, did, in just in terms, not A, in terms of, of the public perception of poetry and poems, and also the way it, it resonated almost universally with everybody? Um, well, I mean, his, I, I, I'm, he's, he's, a, he's a Jedi, really, you know. I'm, 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 but he's I, kind of like in a league of his own, isn't he? And yeah, then, I mean, look at his bog poems and how he man managed to bring together history and the, and the healing that he that he did uh, for for the people of, of, of this island and how he, he spoke to the people of the island. That's an incredibly powerful thing to do. Um, and, and then through those uh, um, universal uh, values, he, he spoke to the rest of the world. Uh, but, yeah. and, well, he did that, and of course, also uh, by virtue of his passing as well, too, it reignited people's interest. Like, well, what's all the fuss about this guy? And mm -hmm. then people go back or they rediscover him or yeah. discover him for the first time, and suddenly the interest kicks on again. Um, Lewis, I have to ask you about the uh, about the typewriter. Um, yeah. Don't see them very often. No, no, no. Uh, my mate bought it for me in a in, in a charity shop for like a five or something, and he was just <laughs> like, "This would be a nice present to give him." Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, and then from then. There's another poet, Stephen Clare, he is a typewriter as well. And he does go out to events and stuff and he does write poems for people. It's um, pay what you think it's worth, you know? So whether it's yeah. 10 cent or 10 euro. And, uh, but I just love the absolute human connection of it, of just uh, stopping someone on the street and just being like, here, do you want the poem? Do you, actually, somebody's just asked me, where do you get the refills and the ribbons and the ink for them? I, mean, I, I haven't had to change a single thing in this, surprisingly oh, enough. Okay. I, I just have to... Actually, well, in fairness, but this ribbon has a little small tear in it, but yeah. I just need to do a little... Uh, is it not a royal pain a in one. the... <laughs> is it not a pain in the bum if you get something wrong? I mean, at least with a laptop or whatever, you could just, you know, click back, erase, and away you go, and keep all the stuff for storage. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, it's a bit alien to me. Uh, Listen, like, you know, one of the things, things you do is, is that you do poems on demand, yeah. and we're going to put you on the spot, right? Right, so for Earl Nahum. Well, we can't actually see that now, so oh, that's <laughs> could really you, good, could yeah. you, um, is, we will have, oh, I'm sorry, we do have a camera on you there, but I mean, that, I don't know what, whoa, <laughs> right, oh, very good, I didn't know they could, mag, lion's tooth. Maybe he'll read it out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what would be really handy, it'd be handy if it was a haiku. <laughs> Sorry, that's a, po that's a poetry <laughs> book <book's> joke. <laughs> he looked at me at surprise as if, God, he knows what a haiku is. <laughs> right. Um, By the way, uh, while you're doing that, yeah. um, celebrations today. Yeah, there's so events going on everywhere. There are, there's over 100 events going on right across the country. Uh, people go onto the Poetry Iron website uh, or poetryday.ie. Poetry they can find out more events. I'm in Cabra Library with the musician Enda Riley at uh, one o'clock. Okay. Um, and then, but yeah, I mean, check out those things right across the, 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 the breadth of the country. And then just, I mean, if people have an interest at home to get involved uh, thereafter, I mean, this might spark an interest, but get out and create and write. There's loads of events taking yeah. place. And it, it's okay. a great environment to kind of form some sort of camaraderie. So thank you very much. Lewis, we're way over time, so yeah. go. Cool, so it's called Lion's Tooth. Irish Daisy, Jewel of Erda, or how you open to greet the morning. Your celestial yellow breeds in the hazy air, the light of the nation. Eighteen years grown strong towards the sun, with an unswerving disposition and a sharp bravado worthy of the name. Then the Leon, the Dawn of the flower. There you go. Can't follow that with anything else. Other than thank you, and we'll take a break.